So <clears throat> I was happy. Eventually, some of the brothers got released back onto the wings. Some got shipped out. Now they, um, after seven and after seven and a half months, um, they've moved. They've moved me. After seven and a half months from the SIG, SIG yeah, from the SIG to Woodhill unit. Now the first the first thing that I observed when I went onto the unit as well was just it felt like a cemetery. So quiet. And I'll be honest with you, in my head I was thinking, seriously, am I really gonna have to do this? Like mm. it was this why was it so quiet? I don't know. Is this? I do know now, and I will explain it to you later on in our conversation. But you have to understand the kind of mental torment that individuals are going through, going through yeah. especially when you're going through solitary confinement when you have nothing. Mm. Now, what they actually done with me? I was on a full PPE, so again, protective gear, seven man unlock. So seven officers. I can't move anywhere without seven officers and a dog handler. The dog's always there. Mm. Double ratchet. So double handcuffed and they're handcuffed onto an officer. Um, the ruling that they the ruling that they had with me as well was that I can't have a toothbrush. I have to apply for it. So they'll give it to me in the morning. Toothbrush. Yeah. I can't have my trainers. I can't have my trainers in there, my footwear in there. I can't have anything. I have to start from scratch. So I had nothing at all. It was just bare. So they put, they closed the door and I put, and I just sat there. I just looked and I just thought, oh, I haven't got nothing to read. Just nothing, nothing at all. Do you think there's a deliberate attempt to mentally torment uh, prisoners, especially Orthodox Muslim prisoners. I don't even need to. I don't even need to think about that. He actually um, expressed his intentions. One of the officers actually said to me as well that we give it to you, Patterson, but we will break you. Mm. And that's what he actually said to me. He looked in my, he looked in my face and he said, "I will break you." So I spoke to another, I, I spoke to another professional about this and he says that, you know, in military prisons that they do these types of t tactics, like stress positions and other things. I said, when I explained to him about the clothing, so he gave me a tracksuit, but it was two sizes smaller. So it makes you self-conscious. Of course. What? So these were the things that they were doing. Sometimes. I would go from the exercise, come back, and there'd be dirt on my bed, dirt on the floor. Psychological torture. 101%. Do you think this is like some of the tactics that they've kind of like third hand learnt from places like Guantanamo Bay and stuff like that to how to psychologically damage the prisoner? I think um, from what I kind of gathered as well, a lot of them have been, especially those that kind of do those tasks because you're considered to be one of the most dangerous in the whole entire country. So I know that a lot of them have had military experience because okay. there was one that really took a disliking to me, which I'm going to talk to you further about, which I ended up again going to court for. You engaged with them? I engaged with them. Eventually mm -hmm. it came to pass. It's like they push you to it. Um, <clears throat> For me, and I'm going to be honest with you and one of the things that I know I've always said this and I will keep on and I know it's become repetitive, but the thing that stuck with me and look, why would I, why would I always, why would I think about this when the guy is not a friend to us? He's a racist. Mm -hmm. But I will never forget the conversation that he wanted just to call his, he just wanted to call a family member because his mother died. And they didn't even allow him a phone call and they said, kick the door again one more time. And he kicked it out of frustration. And I'll never forget the joy in that officer's face when he says, come on, lads, let's boot up. Let's suit up. They beat him so badly. Oh, a phone call. Do you know what they've done? They, and imagine this, that's, that's considered one of their own. So imagine what they were doing to the Muslims. Oh, this was a non-Muslim. This was a non-Muslim that they'd done this to. 
they cut his clothes and so forth. I can tell you stories. Look, I got like eventually they allowed me to have my Quran. I should, have, I should, have, I should, I should, I should have bought it. Okay, and I'll, I'll show you what they tried to do. They actually ripped and damaged the spine of my Quran and handed it to me. Send me a picture later. Put it on the podcast. Seriously. So that's it. I've had to reconfigurate it myself. So you will see it anyway. You can see what I've done to adjust it. Yeah. But definitely, this is the Quran that never leaves me. Wow. So this is um this is what they've done. But they've there was one there was one brother, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna mention his name as well. There's a few brothers, but there was one in solitary confinement. Mention whoever's name you like, as long as they're happy with it. We're, yeah. we're, we're okay to mention so this names. brother. This this brother's um he's his first language is not even English. His name is Yakub. So he's he's an Asian gentleman, very slim. He's been in this from when I was there, when I first went into um solitary, he was already there for five years. He's still there. And he's suffering. In the unit. At, yeah, at times they run in and beat him up and it's horrific. And what is their justification to why they're doing this? He's not corresponding. That's it. You have to also remember, they have a different mindset. I know that things have changed due to Kevin Fakra's family and so forth. So we need to thank them as well. He's a Muslim as well. Who, Kevin what, Fakra. I don't know this. Who, who's this? So Kevin Fakra's um, a gentleman that had an incident in um, Franklin. You might have heard. And officers uh, officer nearly lost their life. No, I didn't hear about and this. And because of this, they um, really beat him very badly. Where that it was, he actually won the case. It was recorded. They actually stopped the van, the ACAT van, and they opened the door and actually beat him. Stopped so the ACAT van? Yeah, yeah, there's evidence of this. And um, eventually it all came out in court and so forth. He won the case. But the backlash is he's still in solitary confinement after all these years. And he went into solitary confinement in 2011, in 2014. So he's been soldier for over a decade. I'm sorry, 2000 and I'm um, sorry, 2024. So he's been he's been for over de a decade in soldier confinement, and his health has deteriorated. He's a very small. He's a small brother, lost in the system. Nobody cares. Nobody. It's not. It's a very painful. It's a. It's a very guys. Today's podcast is in partnership with Stone and Coast Solicitors, experts in serious and complex criminal matters. If you have a criminal matter that you need help with, or you've been arrested and want the best representation. Contact the number below or drop them an email. All the information is on the screen below, as you can see. Stone & Co. can offer specialist criminal defence services on a private basis or legal aid, so you don't pay nothing. And as a promotional offer, they're offering a case review in person or over the phone, free of charge, no obligation, no fees, and they'll take a look at your case, guys.